the Fernanda tank top or poncho crochet pattern. This is an easy side to side construction top that has worked flat in two pieces. You can either sew up the side seams or lace them with ties for a more customizable fit. This design can be made smaller for a tank top or larger for a poncho or cover up. All versions are included in this pattern. You will need number two sport weight yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook. The sweater in the photo features Biso Sporty Yarn in Colorway Fern Forest. And for the demonstration today, I'm going to be using Biso Sporty Bling Yarn in Colorway Peach Sherbet. We're gonna start with tying our yarn to our crochet hook and working our first stripe of the Delta Stitch Pattern section. Row one begins with a chain six. Yarn over your hook four times. Insert your hook in the sixth chain from your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. 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 We now have two loops on our hook. Yarn over your hook four times. Insert your hook in the same chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. 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 We now have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook. And that's a beginning three triple treble cluster. You wanna repeat this for as many times is called out in the pattern for whichever size you're making. And again, that's chain six. Yarn over four times. Insert your hook in the sixth chain from your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. 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 Then yarn over four times. Insert your hook in the same chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Yep, so just refer to your pattern to see how many times you need to do this for completing row one. This is what your work should look like at the end of row one. Keep in mind I'm doing a reduced size sample, so you will make this as long as the pattern calls for, or if you are looking to customize this pattern even further, if you want the tank top or the poncho longer or shorter than is specified in the pattern for whichever size you're making, you simply want to add or take away these stitches in row one. The multiple is just one of them, so it doesn't matter how many you add or take away. The multiple for all the other stitch patterns in this pattern are all based on one of these petals. Row two begins with a double three triple treble cluster in the first and second stitch. So we're gonna start with a chain six. Yarn over four times. Insert your hook in the sixth chain from your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and we'll do that a second time in that same chain, yarn over four times, insert your hook in the same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We now have three loops on our hook, and now we're going to work the second leg of the stitch in the stitch here. So it's yarn over four times, insert your hook in that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and we'll do that two more times in the same stitch. Okay, you should now have six loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all six loops on your hook. That is a double three triple treble cluster. 
a double one, meaning we have two petals that we're adding at the same time. The next stitch is a triple, three triple treble cluster. And so we're going to be working that here, here, and here. Start with a chain six, yarn over four times, working into the stitch right below it, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four times, then work a second leg in that same stitch, yarn over four times, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four times, and then we'll work three more legs into this stitch that we just previously worked in in the last stitch, yarn over four times, insert your hook in that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four times, and we'll work in that same stitch two more times, We now have six loops on our hook, and now we're going to work three more legs in the next stitch. Yarn over four times, insert your hook in that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four times, and do that two more times in the same stitch. If you can't get the loops coming off at the same time, it's okay. You just need to manually pull one over. You notice how on the second to last one, I had to pull it a second time. It's okay. When you're getting used to these stitches, it's okay if you have to manually manipulate them. Okay, we now have nine loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all nine loops. And you can see we have a triple stitch now, meaning that we have the three petals worked. So the first row, we did single clusters or for the petal for single petal, petals. Then we did double clusters here to create two petals. And now the rest of the row, we're going to be doing triple clusters where we're doing three petals at the same time. So I'll show you that triple, three triple treble cluster again. It's yarn over, or it's a chain six. Yarn over four times. Insert your crochet hook in the very last stitch worked. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, four times. And work again in that same stitch. Okay, then we'll work three more legs of the stitch into this stitch here. We now have six loops on our hook, and now we'll work the last three legs in the next stitch. We now have nine loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all nine loops on your hook. And we've done another triple, three triple treble cluster. And you wanna repeat this stitch across the entire row. This is what your work should look like at the end of row two. Row three begins with a single petal or a beginning 
three triple treble cluster, and that is a chain six. This is what we did for row one. Chain six. Yarn over four times, insert your hook in that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four times, and then do a second leg in that same stitch, yarn over four times, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four times, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. So now, what we did, you know how when you're doing rows of double crochet and you do a chain three to count as your first stitch so that you can get the height to start working the rest of your stitches? Well, that's the same concept here in the delta stitch. We did a single petal so that we're at the position to be able to do those triple petal stitches or the triple, three triple treble cluster. So now we're going to do that same three petal stitch that we did in the end of row two, but we're going to do it from this position up here. So we'll do that three We'll do that triple, three triple treble cluster stitch here, here, and here. So it's one petal, two petals, and three petals all work together. But we can only do it because we've added that single petal at the beginning. So I'll show you that stitch again. This is what we did at the end of row two. Chain six, yarn over four times. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two, and through two. Do that one more time. Okay, so now we're going to work the second, the, th the second petal portion here and the third petal portion here. So it's yarn over four times. And if you're unsure of where to work your different legs of your stitches, always set your work down because once you set it down, the anatomy of the stitches is the same as it is in the charts. So once you set your work down flat on the table, you can compare it with the chart, and I think it'll make it much easier to figure out where to work your stitches. Even mid-stitch here, I can still set my work down to see, okay, we've got the horizontal pedal, we've got the diagonal pedal here, here's where my third pedal is gonna go here. See how I had to manually pull through both loops there? Sometimes, based on your tension, it can be easier or sometimes harder to yarn over, pull through two at the same time, and it's okay. If you struggle with it, just manually pull the second loop through. I did it again just there. It's okay. Once you get in a groove and you're doing a bunch of these, it gets easier, but every now and then, every now and again, you have to pull it through manually. It's no big deal. Same when you're pulling through nine loops on the hook. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through all nine. And notice how I'm pulling on my work a little bit. By pulling on the work a little bit, I'm elongating those loops to give myself room to pull that crochet hook through. And notice how I'm pulling the hook into the downward position. It helps to pull it through. But if I got stuck somewhere in the middle there, I could still stop and manually pull the rest of them over. It's okay. Okay. So now we're going to repeat this stitch across the entire row, and at the end of the row, I'll show you where we place our last double triple treble cluster. Okay, so we've come to the end of row two, and you can see that we did our single petal at the beginning of the row, and then we did our three petal stitches across the row, but notice that it's not symmetrical and there's a really easy fix. We did that single petal here, and if we finish this row with a double petal, we'll be symmetrical again. So let me show you how to do the double petal again. That is the first stitch that we did on row two, but we're doing it in a different configure, a different position, but it does the same thing. So it's chain six, two legs, of the stitch in the top of that stitch, right at the end of the chain six. And then we'll work three more legs of this stitch in the last stitch at the end of the row. Yarn over, pull through all six loops. 
and I'll set it down again and you can see now we have a perfectly symmetrical band of these beautiful delta stitches. If you wanted to make this stripe of the top bigger, you would repeat rows two and three. Row one was the setup row, row twos and three are the ones that you would repeat, but to make the pattern exactly as written, we only do three rows of this section, and then we move on to the next stripe, which is a double crochet stitch pattern section, and that starts with a chain three, and then we're going to be working along the edge of these stitches here. So we're going to turn our work. That chain three counts as our first double crochet. And in that top leg of the stitch here, we're going to work around that and work six double crochets around that stitch. Double crochet is yarn over your hook, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we'll do six across this stitch and six across each stitch for the full length of the row. One, two, three, and we're not counting that chain three as part of those double crochets. So we've got a double crochet that counts as a double crochet, then six double crochets in each petal in the last leg, the top leg of each petal across the row. So we'll end up having with however many petals you used or whatever size you're making or however you've modified the pattern, we're going to have a multiple of six plus one at the end of this row. And this is what your work should look like at the end of the first double crochet row. The next row for double crochet section is chain three, turn your work. That chain three counts as our first stitch and we're going to work a double crochet in each stitch across. So it's yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the top of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And you wanna repeat this across the entire row. A quick little reminder, remember the first stitch at the beginning of the row in the double crochet stitch pattern is a chain three that counts as a double. So when you're coming to the end of the row, you're gonna be working into that last stitch, which was the first stitch at the previous row, and it's a chain three that counts as a double crochet. And how you work into that is, you can do it in two different ways. You could either work your stitch inside to the side of it, or you would work into the top third or top chain of that double crochet and work your stitch like that. So it's the top chain that counts as the equivalent of the double crochet. And whichever way you choose to do it, just be consistent throughout your pattern. For the remainder of the double crochet stitch pattern stripe, you'll want to repeat this last row for however many times is called out in the pattern. And this changes based on which size you're making. I'm gonna move on and show you how to do the mesh stitch pattern section now. So the mesh stitch pattern section starts with a chain five. And that chain five counts as a double crochet chain two. So the first three chains count as the double crochet portion of it. And the chain two is for a chain two space. We're gonna turn our work. So the chain three counting as a double works for this stitch. Then the chain two is a chain space. We skip the next two stitches and then we double crochet in the next stitch. Yarn over your hook. And notice how when I'm working my first double crochet after a long chain, I take my ring finger on my dominant hand and I hook the chain into that finger. And that's what gives my work some tautness so that I have a little more control over my work to be able to place my stitch and keep tension on my yarn and my work at the same time. So it's yarn over your hook, insert in that specified stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now chain two. Skip two stitches and double crochet in the next stitch. And so across this row, it's chain two, skip two stitches and double crochet in the next. And you wanna repeat this all the way across. This is what the end of the first row of the mesh stitch pattern should look like. The second row of the mesh stitch pattern is a chain three which counts as a double crochet, turn your work, and then work two double crochets in the next chain two space.
one double crochet in the next double crochet. Our repeat across the row is two double crochets in the next chain two space. And double crochet in the next double crochet. And you want to repeat this across the entire row. At the end of the row, we're working the last repeat into that chain five, which was the beginning of the previous row. But that chain five counted as a double crochet chain two. So when you think of it like that, it's pretty easy to figure out. We're going to work two double crochets around the chain two, and then we're going to work a double crochet in the double crochet portion of the chain five, which will be that top, that third chain of the chain five, which is the top of the chain three portion. So it's two double crochets in the space. And so we've pretty much covered up the chain two that counts as a chain two space. And what we have left are these three chains, the top of that third chain or the third chain of the chain five is the double crochet portion. So we'll work our last double crochet in that third chain of the chain five. And that's what the second row of the mesh stitch pattern looks like. The mesh stitch pattern is a two row repeat and you want to refer back to the pattern to see how many times you repeat that. Also from there we'll then be alternating stripes of the double crochet stitch pattern and the mesh stitch pattern to work across the whole width of the top or width of the poncho. Remember this is a side to side project so as we're working those stripes we're really working sideways. And then at the end of the front, which we will be repeating all of this to make the back, we're going to work a second panel of the delta stitch pattern. Now, the only difference is that we did three triple treble stitches in each cluster to make all of these petals, right? But when we worked into the side of the last set of them with the double crochets, we ended up working over one of the petals and creating something that looks like a two stitch cluster. So how I'm going to re I'm going to replicate that on this side of the work so that there's symmetry in the pattern. And the way we do that first row is a chain one, turn our work, and single crochet in the first stitch. Single crochet is uh, single crochet is insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through two. And now to do a beginning two triple treble cluster, we're going to chain six, yarn over four times, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, five times, skip five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, and single crochet in the next stitch. And so what we've created is a two leg cluster stitch that will lay horizontally and look identical to this one. And then we'll get that symmetry so that the rest of our delta stitch panel will look identical to the one over here. Pretty cool, huh? So I'll show you that again. We'll do a chain six. Yarn over four times. Insert your hook in the same stitch. Yarn over, pull up loop. Yarn over, pull through two five times, skip five stitches, and single crochet in the next. And you want to repeat that across the entire row. Then rows two and three of the last panel of the delta stitch pattern are identical to rows two and three from the first one down here. You want to refer to the pattern to uh, pay attention to all the really detailed schematics that will show you where to sew your shoulder seams as well as how to create the chain ties with tassels if you choose to do that instead of sewing the side seams. All of that information is listed along with written instructions for all the sizes plus charts. Follow the link in the video description to download the pattern with all of the information and sizes and charts and schematics, plus information on ordering Be So Sporty or Be So Sporty Bling yarn. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. And if you check out the video description, I've provided links for everything we talked about in this video. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.